Hello everybody. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for coming. Uh, hit the like button if you like and please subscribe. It does help my channel out a lot and I appreciate it so much. Biden attempts a con on the American people but gets burnt by Twitter. On Sunday, President Biden and the official White House account tweeted their delight at the recent decrease in petrol prices, which prompted an immediate backlash on social media. After reaching an all-time high in the month of June, <clears throat> excuse me, the price of gasoline at the pump had steadily declining over the past three and a half months, as Vice President Joe Biden mentioned at the onset of the conversation, he went on to say that since reaching their peak, prices have fallen by around 25 cents. Now this was posted uh, four days ago. According to his tweets, the price of gasoline has been going down for more than 13 weeks in a row as fall approaches. After some time had passed, the official White House account sent out a tweet that contained something that reiterated the previous narrative. According to what was written in the tweet, today marks 95 days of falling gas prices across the U.S. Americans are looking to find some room to breathe at the pump as a result of the continued decline in the price of gasoline at the fastest rate seen in more than a decade. In addition, the tweet from the White House included a graphic that depicted some of the information that would be seen on a fake receipt. At the very bottom of the ticket, it claimed the fastest fall in petrol costs in almost a decade. Skeptics, on the other hand, did not trust the narrative and voiced their opinions on Twitter. Even though they are much lower than when they were in June, some individuals have noticed that gas prices are still much higher than the, during the time of President Biden's inauguration. This is despite the fact that they are much lower than when they were in June. Others countered that the White House of Vice President Joe Biden should not be given credit for the reduction in gas prices because they had previously stated for several weeks that they'd, they had no control over the increase in gas prices and that was caused by the conflict between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Ukraine. According to a tweet from VRWC Texan, the national average price of gasoline was 50 percent lower January 2020 when President Joe Biden pledged to bring together all of the United States citizens by raising his right hand. The White House has stated that President Joe Biden is now responsible for the rising price of gasoline. Joe Biden did it. White House as well. Joe Biden is responsible for both an increase and a drop in the price for gasoline. The tweet from at Gov's The Problem states that the Biden administration feels that America's citizens are dumb. Oh, really? Huh. Well, I don't quite believe that we are dumb. But even as Vice President, he took credit for the gas being dropped. Now he's taking credit being President for the gas being dropped. But yet, he's got the nerve to say we're stupid. Right here, breaking a, a Biden attempts a con on the American people, but gets burnt by Twitter. Hmm, that was a short article. Let's go ahead and put that down. And let's go to this one. Here we go. Now this was posted four days ago. Always look for the date. 
but for some reason there's no date here except for four days ago. And this is called the Puppet Master, Obama Speaks. I don't know about anybody else, but I really didn't care for him either. Americans oppose President Joe Biden's lawless, wage-cutting mass migration because they are racist, not because of their economic worries, according to former President Barack Obama. Right now, the biggest fuel behind the Republican agenda is related to immigration and the fear that somehow America's character is going to America's character is going to be changed if people of darker shades that are too many of them here, Obama told a meeting in Hispanic Realtors on September 25th in San Diego, California. Obama used his divide and rule claims of racism to hide the public opposition to migration's economic impact, according to his comments posted in September 25th. I wished I could be more E-U-P-H-E-M-I-S-T-I-C Euphemistic Infinifistic <laughs> Here we go again folks Hang in there Okay let me start over But I'm not going to try to pronounce that word Feministic Ephemistic Euphemistic Euphemistic I wish I could be more Euphemistic <laughs> about it except they're not that subtle about it they're just kind of saying it obama said you hear it on hard right media you hear it from candidates and politicians you hear things like great replacement theory i mean this is not sup supple subtle s-u-b-t-l-e subtle unless we're able to return to a more inclusive vision inside the Republican Party, it's going to be hard to get a bill done. Obama also argued that public opposition to mass migration is more dangerous than government support for the nation changing migration that has killed thousands of migrants and many more Americans. Here's Obama again. When you have that kind of rhetoric floating around out there. We've seen it in history that it is dangerous rhetoric. It's dangerous wherever it appears and it's dangerous here in the United States. Since January 2021, Biden and his pro-migration border chief have extracted roughly, roughly 3 million migrants from poor countries into the U.S. economy via, via the southern border, likely in violation of federal law. I mean, you know, we know and heard and read. He was flying them in at midnight from the border. Don't you find that suspicious? Hey. Right? They have also pulled more than two million legal immigrants, visa workers, white collared illegals via airports. That massive government-engineered migration has delivered at least one migrate for every two births since January of 2021. In 2013 and 2014, Obama and Biden used claims to racism to stigmatize Americans' popular opposition to mass migration as they were trying to push the doom Gang of Eight cheap labor bill through Congress cheap labor bill through Congress. But that incendiary smear is contradicted by numerous polls which show that the public wants to welcome some immigration, but also declares deep and broad public opposition to labor migration and the inflow of temporary contract workers into the good jobs of U.S. graduates need to raise families. That's that's what I said in another video. They want them the migrates here because they'll work cheaper, take the jobs away from our people. Oh dear God. 
This third rail of opposition is growing, anti-established, multi-irrational, cross-sex, non-racist, class-based, bipartisan, rational, persistent, recognizes the solidarity that American citizens owe to one another. For example, almost half of Hispanics, blacks, and Asians believe Biden's global invite has created an invasion of migrants, says a July poll by IPSOS. The invasion view is mainstreamed. 58% of white Americans and 40% of Democrats says Biden's global invite is an invasion, according to data released on August 19th by IPSOS. The public's opposition to mass migration is rational, rational because migration imposes vast economic and civic burdens on ordinary Americans while it boosts wealthy and powerful Americans. For example, migration spikes the cost of housing. That is great for realtors, but is a huge burden for young couples seeking to buy a house for their families. Immigration has increased California's population by at least 33%, sharply increasing competition for good and poor housing amid fast-growing wealth and equity, and equity, equity, drug addiction and homelessness. In California, the median price of a house is $725,000 according to the neighborhoodscout.com. That price is three and a half times as much as in 2020, the site says. The impact of migration on housing prices is rarely mentioned in the corporate media, but pro-migration groups tout migration as a boon, boon for real estate investors. Uh, wouldn't that be boom? but they got Boon, B-O-O-N. Well, for example, a 2017 report by the Cato, C-A-T-O, Institute says the cost of illegal immigration could be reduced by cutting spending on border enforcement if the typical illegal immigrant increases the value of all housing unit prices by 11.5 cents. Then illegal immigrants increase nationwide housing values by about one trillion dollars. Nationwide in 2022, full-time workers need to earn an hourly wage of 25.82 on average to afford a modest two-bedroom rental home, according to the National Low-Income Housing Coalition. Coalition. Americans need to earn 21.25 an hour to afford a modest one-bedroom rental home, the group added. Similarity, migration flatlines Americans' wages by minimizing pressure on companies to offer competitive wages or to invest in the productivity boosting machinery that is needed to earn decent wages in a global economy. For example, the borough of labor statistics reported that wages and salaries rose by 5.1% in the 12 months up to June 2022, but median wages declined because inflation rose by 8.1% in the 12 months up to August. Federal immigration policies also pulls wealth from heartland states toward coastal states. This happens because of coastal investors in New York and California who might be tempted to hire employees in distant and inconvenient hardland states knows that the federal government's extraction migration strategy delivers a preferable supply of grateful, reliable, cheap workers to downtown bus stations each day. What'd I say? What'd I say? The mass migration also has also given employees an easy excuse to not hire marginalized Americans, including those who are on drugs. Let me read that again. The mass migration has also given employers an easy excuse to not hire 
marginalized Americans, including those who are on drugs. The mass inflow has also given wealthy progressives a dependent population to display their charity toward while they carefully sideline many millions of poor Americans who might vote against progressive power. This elite's growing disregard for ordinary Americans comes amid the rising deaths of despair and the death of more than 100,000 Americans in 2021 from drug overdoses. This dismissal of Americans is often framed as the claim that American economy is dependent on immigrants. Despite the many millions of Americans who have been sidelined by the government policy, but many progressives also praise immigration because it helps to replace Americans and their society. <clears throat> well, I stated, you know, in one of the other videos, they want to get rid of us. What a shame. The phenomenon, phenomenon, population replacement writ large is America and has been from the beginning, sometimes by force, mostly by choice. According to Britt Stevens, a New York Times column, column, columnist, what the far right calls replacement is better described as renewal, he wrote in May. Democrats and their progressive supporters are also trying to shift the blame away from Biden's government toward the businesses that manage the economic side of the strategy. Donor-backed Republican leaders try to hide the pocketbook pain by migration by redirecting public op opposition toward the crime caused by illegal migration. But the blame shifting is difficult because of public natural solidarity with their fellow Americans. Original article. My goodness. My, 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 my. Obama himself is illegal. So once more here to control, firm the dams to keep control and put us under the globalist. Obama is a lying, narcissistic, corrupt, and decisive POS. He just loves printing and speaking in front of people. When he tried to rally for Biden, hardly anyone came. The Dems melt when he comes on stage, but they don't know the real socialist communist. Mm, 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 mm. Well, my goodness. Mm. Well, can it get any worse? <laughs> well, possibly. Are we ready for it? We're America, and we're strong. But we still have our limits. I'll be back. So long.